makes it easier. We'll do that first. And what part of it helps you? Talking to Jehovah and Satan? Oh God, yeah. All right, I forgot that. Uh, there was a little, little blurb after I watched everybody die, and I figured out that you go where you believe. And I went, wait a minute. Well, what about the whole Jehovah thing? And I'd always wanted to talk to, you know, my, the guy I talked to that I that saved me from my real father, really, kept me sane, that in school. Straight-A student. Was I exceptionally smart? Probably not. I just liked it there a lot better than home. So, yeah, I was exceptionally good at that. So, I wanted to talk to Jehovah God. So, here I go, pop, and next thing I know, because instantly things happen over there. And so instantly I was in front of the classic Jehovah God, and I swear to God, he was a live version of every painting you've ever seen, with the long white hair on the throne, and I popped in front of him, and I started asking questions, and he was like ignoring me, he tried to do the booming voice thing. Now I showed up in my present form, well, my present form in 2008, didn't think anything about it, and I tried to talk to him, I went, there's God, and he was like... <coughs> Basically, he boomed out, shut up and do as you're told. Very patriarchal, very bossy, very Old Testament-y. And I went, what? And I went, this is God, you know, he should know everything that I knew already. And he was like, oh, no, no, I talked to Jehovah and Satan after I came back from Zooming. So I'll talk about Zooming in a minute because that's harder to explain. So I went Zooming out and then I thought of God and I came back. So now I've gone way, way out there and I came back and I'm talking to God. And I want to talk about all this stuff, right? And he is, like, not so open to that. Now, Jehovah was created by people's beliefs in Jehovah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he thinks that he is the biggest, baddest kid on the block. He absolutely believes that. He will take nothing else. He believes he was totally thrown. Because when I got annoying, because I kept saying, no, no, no. There's this out here, just turn around. It was almost like, just turn around, it's right there. He wouldn't do it, would not look, wouldn't listen to me. So he tried doing the booming voice and killing me thing. And I could tell that he was trying to do it. And I looked at him, he was in fourth dimension, by the way. Fourth dimension of this game, inside game. About two-thirds up, so to speak. That's where Jehovah is, right? When I went to find him. And I was like laughing at him, going, really, dude? You really think that that's going to work? I just told you where it came from. I just told you. And he wouldn't listen. He was like, no, 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 no. That's what Joe was like. Very annoying dude. I was not amused at all. And I kept, it's like he was kept turning, and I kept moving in front of it, going, no, 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 no. Hey, no, 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 no. He'd go, boom, die. And I went, you can't kill me. I'm already dead. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, I very quickly just got annoyed at him, and I just went, okay, well, here's... Jehovah, I dinged in front of him with a thought. How about Satan? And bam, I was right in front of Satan. Now, Satan is cooler. Much cooler dude, Satan is. But he was created cooler, you know. He's like on the side of all sins, all the fun stuff. Jehovah's against all the fun stuff. So he was very willing to talk. Very willing to talk. Now, granted, he is in the fourth dimension. He is the opposite of Jehovah. Therefore, he was always trying to convince me of stuff. But at least he talked about it. He still wouldn't turn around and look the other way. But at least he was pleasant. He's very pleasant. Okay, now that I went, okay, well, I could tell where these guys were in the game, and they were in the game. I knew where they'd been created. I could tell all of that. I could read it all vibrationally. And so I got bored, took off again, went zooming back out again. Now, the interesting thing is, not too long ago, I was watching, somebody referred me to a YouTube video, and this young guy, I think in his 20s, and he died or went out of body or something. So he was describing talking to Jehovah God, and it went a lot better. I mean, he actually had a conversation with the guy. And I was like, because I went, and I went, what the, how did you have a conversation? I didn't, so I followed, because I didn't do this. I followed the guy vibrationally to the event where he was talking to Jehovah God, and watched it, I could see it. And I went, the guy showed up as a guy. And Jehovah God would talk to him. I showed up as a woman, and Jehovah wouldn't talk to me. And I went, well, son of a bitch. <laughs> Actually, he's not son of anything, but okay. So I went, well, I'll be darn. So I didn't even think to show up as a man, which I could have done. He didn't do anything you want. So anyway, back to Zooming. So I went outside of this game to all of those thousands of stars of all those games. First thing I did when I was outside the game was turn around and look at the game. And what I did was I could like take your fingernail 
and I, I did this. I just picked a random person. I took their fingernail. I went to a molecule that was in the fingernail, and I felt the experience that the molecule had while it was alive in that fingernail. And then I zoomed out, and I do a person, and then a family unit, and then a state, and then a country. I, I collapsed the whole time space of Earth's total existence in <coughs> outside of as I collapsed into now time. So I did all of that. So I was zooming all over the place and seeing all these different experiences. Then I could pull back and I could feel them all at once. Like this. Then I pulled out of the game and I went, well, that was fun. So I just started zooming to other <coughs> games that you couldn't even possibly fathom. What I say is the other games, from your perspective, the closest thing I can explain is beautiful music, magnificent colors that constantly change. And those are some of my favorite games are like that. They're more energy, and it's more this constant flow of beautiful colors that you can't even fathom, on a scale that you can't even fathom, with, with music that you can't even fathom, in so many layers. And there were all kinds of games that you can imagine, like Stephanie, she's much more where she remembers. Oh, interesting story. Now, Stephanie was born a strange child from the beginning. And I didn't understand her at all. And I pulled her out of school in third grade. She's very independent, and she's always disliked humans. Really bad. I mean, she really... But when she got old enough, she would just straight out say, I wish there was a virus that would take out all the humans on the planet, including me. That'd be fine. Way into connecting with nature and animals. Seriously. Always. <coughs> so after a while, I kind of got used to it. And then I was a single mom, had to work, and... Set her up to be homeschooled <clears throat> via computer and internet, thus the internet queen that she is. Smarter than anybody I know at 29, and yes, she's 29. But, anyway, years go in, I die, right? And I don't really, I'm not that close to her. I have a son I'm much closer to. She was a very quiet child. She could also do invisible. She would, like, disappear in a room, and then all of a sudden she'd be there. It's bizarre. I remember thinking about it at the time. It happened over and over, and then I kind of blew it off. Yeah, that was my imagination. Humans do that all the time when they do magical things. They just blow it off, or see magical things. They just blow, oh, I didn't really see that. That didn't really happen. They do it all the time. Think themselves out of it. <clears throat> so I die, and I come back. A couple of years later, took a couple of years to learn to walk and talk and get my life sort of back in, in play. Then I started having these, I started feeling confident enough to like talk about what had happened and I would go to her and I would say, da 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 da, and she looked at me just totally blankly and she, she went, so, yeah? And I went, what? And I would say, you knew that? And she said, yeah, and she'd expound on it. Whatever it is, I was, in one little sentence, she'd go in, da 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 da. Well, over the course of two or three years, I figured out the child didn't have amnesia. She came in remembering where we all come from. She has very little amnesia. So what she thought is she thought all of you, all the humans, were like her, that they didn't have amnesia. If you don't have amnesia and you understand everything's connected, if you hurt another person or an animal or a plant, or the, that's like slamming your own thumb on purpose over and over again with a hammer. It was just stupid. So that's the reason why she hated humans. She just thought that they were just stupid. And so I had to tell her in those moments, I said, uh, people don't remember this. I didn't remember any of this. And she went, oh, and over time, <clears throat> she has learned to not hate humans as much. <laughs> I won't say that there's a blanket love there, but she, oh, yes, yeah, she taught, she understands the situation a lot better than she was. So interesting concept. Now, in her, the place that she likes, she would consider home outside, because all of us have our preferent places that we like to hang out. Other games, all of us do. And the way that the place that she is is very physical, like you think of physicality. But it's like physicality with no bad things and with magic. So all the beings that you've heard about, every single one of them, fairies, unicorns, dragons, um, vampires, werewolves, humans have maligned them, the stories, as they dropped in vibration. Because all those creatures are still here, by the way. They're around here all the time. It's just that they vibrate higher. Now, people go, well, that can't be. You know what, really? Seriously? You know that a wolf, a cat, 
a bat experiences things that you can't, hears, smells, sees, you know that. So just imagine that you put on new glasses on your eyes, and you went, Ch -ch 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 -ch, and you raise your vibration, you could look around and you could see all that stuff there. But as humans lower their vibration to the third dimension, those creatures said, eh, no, I don't want to. <clears throat> no, thank you very much. Most of, there are some of them that operate in the fourth dimension here, but it's kind of a sideline positive realm. And then a lot of them just stayed in the fifth dimension that we're going back up to. So think going down to the third dimension, raising back up to the fifth. They're all waiting there. They went, eh, no, we're not doing it. The ones that you will see the most often are the fairies. And fairies are around you all the time. They love, 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 love humans. They were the ones that they saw, they went away the last, the least. That's why children see them so often. It's because the children have been taught not to see them. They're happy more, all the time. <coughs> That's a higher vibration. Happiness is, all, is much higher. <coughs> the older we get, if you're more tired and sad and despair and just sadness and worry and fear, that's a, much, that's a very low vibration. You are not going to reach a fairy that way. You'll see one when you're happier. Birthday parties, they love parties. They love parties. And wind chimes. Wind chimes, yeah. Flowers. They love to ride dragonflies. They can be anything they want to be. So they can be giants. They can be teeny tiny. They can be whatever they want to be. Fun loving little creatures. I love them very much. That and dragons. I'm a big dragon fan. Yes. Jesus. 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 There's about, I met about 32, 33 Jesuses. Classically, the story that you know of is Jesus. There was no Jesus that that happened to. That's, if it's in the Bible, no, it didn't happen. There was no Jesus that did that. I could not see any Jesus that was crucified. There were Jesuses that had followers that kind of twinkled away. They didn't really rave. They twinkled away. And what they were doing was they, were, they, they raised their vibration so high that, like, you can't see... The fairies anymore, they raised their vibrations so that you could no longer see them. They didn't go anywhere. They were right in front of you. But you couldn't see them anymore because your vibration stayed the same and theirs raised. So they went, <laughs> the Jesuses joined the fairies. <laughs> so would you say then, would you say then that each, each religion or each denomination or faction of Christianity or whatever has created its own Jesus? Well, it really, during that time period that the Bible was... The New Testament, really, because Jesus is New Testament, Jehovah's Old Testament. This is very definitely a split, even though they shoved them together. These are two completely different things, vibrationally. Jehovah God really isn't in the New Testament. It was more a Jesus thing. And what happened was during that period of time, there was a, it was a thing for young men to go out into the world and find themselves. And a lot of those young men went east. And they found the Taoist and the Zen and the Confucius type thinking, which is actually, I, I would say the closest to truth would be the Tao thinking, is, is actually the closest. Uh, Zen thinking is it's probably the closest that's on the planet right now. The Hindus could, but they messed it up massively, so it kind of went haywire along the years. But they, back, way back then, it was a much simpler way of thinking. So these young men came back to share. They went over there. They were with monks and stuff, and they found this happiness, this lighter feeling, this, this way of being. And they certainly did what you would consider miracles, what I would consider just realizing that you're God and you do stuff their time frame got shorter and what they wanted to do, and they came back and they wanted to share that with their friends and family. Of those guys, there were three that were really good, uh, 32, 33 of them, depending upon the timeline you're, that you're on, at, about throughout that. There were about 30 of these guys that were exceptionally good speakers, and they were very good at what they did. And so when they did the New Testament, they kind of took all of these guys is beliefs. They put them all together and they formed this book and then they had to control people because again, you don't want that kind of belief out if you're going to third dimension. They slammed a whole bunch of other stuff. Do, don't do this and scare tactics and 
hell and stuff on top of it. So there's always truth underlying everything if you can find it. But then there's truth underlying to get you drawn in because you know. Instinct knows. You know where. There is always a tie to the knowingness they've never been able to get rid of. So if you hear it, your body just reacts. You just, you don't know why. It may not make any sense, but you just know. And so they use that. They use that to draw you in. They go, oh, you go, yeah, I know that. And then they build these other things on top of it to, like, keep you in fear and despair. Always keep you nervous. But that's how they keep the gods in amnesia, which is the game. Now, these these entities that are playing the parts, they are literally playing the parts of Jehovah God yep. and Satan and Jesus. And Just like you're playing the role of Alta. Well, I'll be dang. <laughs> And they're no better, no worse than you just, just volunteer to play a different role, that's it. That's all. Just like the leaf and the butterfly, volunteer to play a role, that's all. You get to, anybody jumps in, somebody will have a, we're getting ready to do this, who wants to play this? Or somebody will come in and go, how about if I did this? So in the case of Jehovah, there was a lot of years with a lot of energy that went to create that entity. And so an entity from outside comes in when the energy gets to be a certain point, which is hard to explain here, then an entity can come in and go, I'll grab that energy and become this. Just It's like a consensus reality. Enough people mm -hmm. believe it and that creates it. Yep. Well, everything is created by everything that you do, but bigger things are created by group consciousness. Everybody agrees and goes, yeah, this would be, this would be cool. Let's create this. Same thing is true with all the other gods and goddesses. Yeah, Jehovah's not the only one. They're all up there. Yeah, Krishna and Vishnu. And yeah, I'm all of them. Thor and Stephanie and her. <laughs> she knows them all. Bastet, Thoth, um, <clears throat> Loki, uh, the Aztec gods that are very hard to pronounce. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Selene, Dagda, Pan, Hecate, Zeus. You name them, they got them. a big place, and Christianity is relatively young. There was always gods... Way all this whole time. So there have been gods that have been around for a very, very long time. Most of them before, really the monotheistic gods are the ones that took us to 3D. Mm -hmm. They were the death knell. It took a lot of practice to figure out how to get human form into complete amnesia. And they finally figured it out in the death knell. Or the wind bell, from their perspective, mm -hmm. was the monotheistic religions. When they got rid of the multi-gods that were attached to earth, and they had to do that. They had to cut off people energetically being able to connect to Gaia. And they did that with the monotheistic patriarchal god that said they're all, and they wiped everybody out. You know that. Or they all went underground. And it worked. It worked like a charm. So they control the um, health of the planet. They control the education of a planet. They control the wealth of a planet. And they control the religion of a planet, and with those things in total, together, you can control the people. They are now in amnesia. They believe that they're nothing, they have no control, and they are at the whim. You, you have no control over everything, but <coughs> bingo, now you've got full amnesia, and your God's self is now buried. It's We're not, not worthy. Absolutely. <laughs> not good enough, not, not anything. Right. You first, and then you. Gaia wants to stop doing this yes. gig. Yeah, she's done. What kind of a time frame? Ours? It, yeah, it depends. Everybody can play out time. I know it seems like it, but those of us that are older know better. We can remember what summers felt like as children and what they feel like now. Time changes how you feel about it. That, that also can be done. For me, it will be a much shorter time frame. But for me, you know how whatever you're older, 10 years can go by and like that. But 10 years as a child is like not the same thing. Same thing is true with this. If you want to get to fifth dimension or the whole thing to be over in what feels like five years, that could play out in five minutes to me. And the way things will look is they'll look very much the same. They'll look very much the same. A tree, people think trees live much longer than humans. A fruit fly lives much less than humans. But from their perspective in time space, all of it feels about the same. The tree's experience feels very much like a human life. And a fruit fly's experience feels like a human life. They all are the, about the same unless an entity wants to extend it. 
if they want to stretch it out, they can, because time and space is an illusion. You get to control it however you want. It's an illusion that we're all doing it the same. That's not true. But you gave the reference to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the two bombs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that kind of made her say... She said, no, that's it, I'm done. And basically, I'm sure that this crew, if you haven't, you should. There have been many, many nuclear bombs that have been attempted to be set off. And there will frequently be an alien ship that comes over and goes zap and it doesn't work. Yeah, there, there are alien beings that are working. Oh, this doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. You're not in a bubble. There is a contiguous, like there's an ant, and above that there's this and this and this and this. It keeps going. So there are entities that have been in play with humans all along. Uh, humans were created by aliens. Our, our DNA, was probably the richest source in 4D, which is why I'm a little, don't understand why humans, it's crazy, because humans don't know that's why. In fourth dimension, the human body alone is worth way a lot of money. A lot of money. Because our genetics are so rich, because it's been so many different aliens that have kind of inserted to tweak and change humans along the way to get to 3D, that we have the most complex DNA. And out in fourth dimension, that's what's worth something. It's it's those... It's like Jupiter ascending. Yeah. It's like Jupiter ascending. Watch the moon. <coughs> like that. Well, what about the future? What are you saying? Wait, 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 Yes, Moth. So. <laughs> In our research, we have had a lot of people say that when you come here, before you come here, you plan the environment that you're going to come to, the timeline and so forth. And everybody's going to play a role, your parents, teachers, brothers, sisters, preacher, and so forth and so on. They all get together and say, okay, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do that, and we'll all come together in basically the same area. We'll get together somehow. We'll have help from our spirit guys. And you know you'll marry so and so, and so and you'll be the teacher, and the, you know the grade school, and you'll be the high school teacher. It'll all, it'll all, it'll all work out. Well, the the people who are supposed to play the bad guys in this duality, the ones that hurt us the most, uh, emotionally hurt us, physically hurt us, somebody has to play that part, mm -hmm. and nobody wants to because it's so distasteful. So only your best friends. Do only it. your best friends volunteer because yep. nobody else will do nobody it. Nobody wants to. So do that it. that adds a whole new dimension to the concept oh, yeah. of love your enemies. Oh. It? Trust me, you you best make peace with that now because, uh, yeah, that is not a fun thing to do, although instantly you're over it. But you will go up and it will be slapped in your face because on the other side, if you are, especially if you're a long-term human and you want some really, really bad things to happen to you, or even civilizations will do that. Like Hitler, for instance. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. Oh, I'm not going to say that. on. I'm going to get caught up for that. But entities that have bad guy roles in any way. If you've ever been in a room where you walk into somebody's house and you know there's been a fight and it feels bad. Have you ever done that? Have you ever been next to somebody who doesn't say a word, not to you, but they're in a really bad mood and you feel it and you don't like it and you want to leave? Can you imagine a whole society hating you with everything that's in their soul? It is an intense role to play. It takes... Uh, I uh, I don't even know how they do it. I, I do not know how they do it. It's long-term humans that play those roles. Well, you have to be very practical. Huh? They love them first. Hmm? They oh, no, no. She's love. not talking about Germany. She was talking about the rest of the world. Oh. Yeah, I mean, just any kind of hatred. you got a bad guy. Serial killers that are known. Manson. Mm -hmm. Anything. But society wants those intensities. Societies also have consciousness that are agreed upon to play out roles. And it, that was a big one. What Hitler created was a big one. That people wanted that contrast so they could go never again. We prefer this. We don't prefer this. We prefer this. Show us the difference. It's all about experience. So the day that you get that out of your head, which is hard for people, they want people to die and get punished for doing bad things. They don't want to hear that it's a dualistic world, guys. If you... You can't all play good guys. You want to play the role. People want to come and save the day. It's a big thing. Be the hero. Save the day. Make a difference. Well, the only way you can do that 
is if there's some bad guy who set up the other side for you to save the day from. So you're saying Hitler was the best friend of a whole lot of people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you have to understand that this is a game. And if you understand it's a game, all of it becomes a lot easier. People say, well, do you, have you forgiven the people that have done bad things to you? I've been raped more times than I want to look at. Am I mad at any of those? No. They've said, do you forgive them? I went, no. Why? Forgiveness implies I have forgiven you. No, I, don't, I haven't forgiven anybody. There's no reason for forgiveness. <clears throat> this was agreed upon. Thank you very much. I needed to get to third dimension. I created all of it. I'm responsible for all of it. Good, bad, right, wrong. It's all the way it's supposed to be. I didn't like it. Don't want to do it again. But it's me that created it. Now, that's the flip side. That's the flip side. You have to own everything that's ever happened to you is your fault, period. That's powerful. That but in that powerful. moment, the day that you step through there and own that and give up going after anybody, the government, your family, your employer, the day you give that up, you have more freedom than ever because now you can stop forward going, I'm in charge. Not you, not anybody else, I'm in charge. And I may fall down on the job, and I may not do it perfectly, but at least I'm in control of this puppy now. And that's what they didn't want you to remember. Because the day more of us get the hang of that, this puppy comes back out and Gaia's back up into 5D, which is why the star seeds came. To, to talk about this stuff. Okay. I, okay, I'm on with that. Now, is is Hitler still being hurt? No. By mm -mm. people who are talking bad? No. You know, who no. hate him? No. Uh, okay. No, but certainly at the time he was in physical body. And that, yes, I've heard somebody say when he died, he did not go flying out. It took some time. I think I've heard of people saying that he had to go to like a hospital and have his vibrations fixed. And that is true. Not because he was a bad person but because the intensity of the animosity of the planet against him was so intense, was so intricate, that it took some time for him to get un discombobulated. Okay, you're talking about in the other realms. The no, coming out of this, yeah, yeah coming yeah. out of this after okay. death. After okay. death. Within death, it was a whole different thing. After that, if you hate Hitler, that doesn't bother Hitler not one bit. He's not here anymore. He's way gone. He's off in other games. That hurts you. You, you hate Hitler, you've sent that to the law of attraction, it's going to bring more hate. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. I'm pro everything. You can experience anything you want. You'll never hear me judge any of it. I, myself, <clears throat> am tired of this shit. I'm going to go with happiness and joy, so that's my gig. But isn't that a judgment in itself? What? That you hate this 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 world and all the crap. Oh, absolutely. Living. Absolutely. But I don't call it a judgment. To me, a judgment is harsh. It's very harsh. To me, it's a preference. It's a preference. No, no harm, no foul against anybody who enjoys the game. Lord <coughs> knows I live, you know, what, a thousand yards or five hundred yards from a long-term human that loves it, the game. No harm, no foul. It's just the problem is they don't give me the same respect, but they can. They're in the middle of the game. <coughs> I still have my preference, and I'm a god I have a right to. And nobody's going to tell take that away from me, not ever again. That's the joy of dying. I don't have to. Must be nice. It is. It's lovely. I'm pro death all the way around. I think she has the relationship. <clears throat> I'd like to know who thought that up and stomped them. We, yeah, <laughs> it's a. It was a part of the dropping because what what happens is here. Repeat the question. Love is uh, relationships. The question is stomping whoever came up with relationships. That's a part of the dualistic game, and it is a part of the lowering of vibration. Because the more you forget, when, when you pull away and you, and you develop amnesia, we're very used to being connected to each other. We know everything about each other. There is this oneness that, that is true. You, you are oneness. You know everything about everything. When you come down here, the first thing that you're slammed into this separate tiny body, and then you start getting slammed with, you're separate, you're separate, you're alone, then you miss that. There's a hole here that you want to fill. And that hole being filled is what causes a great deal of fear, animosity, 
anger, and despair. Those are all low, low, low vibrations. Those are third dimensional vibrations. Is you trying to fill that hole, whether it's with a child, a mate, money, a job, animals, whatever it is you want to fill it with, all of those are not love. That's Alcohol, not food, love. Shopping. Alcohol. Fill in the blanks. Whatever it is, or whatever number of things, because it's frequently a number of things. And people will continue to try to feel that longing for being connectedness. And that comes from us coming from the all that is. And that's the whole. And the way that you really feel that is to remember that you never lost it. It was never gone. And all of that bullshit that they've told you about you needing this or that or this or that is all just that bullshit. You don't need anything. The second you don't need anything, then the relationships will fall into place and you will have true unconditional love. I know they say unconditional love, but they don't mean it. <laughs> there are conditions with every single love on here. If your kid misbehaves, if they become a serial killer, more than likely that love is going to change. If your mate does not do what was agreed upon, whatever the love is that you based it on, whether it's money or a person, the second it does not do what you want it to do, which eventually it will not, there will come a time because it can't read your mind, eventually that will fail. And it will fail over and over to the point that you go, okay, that's it, I'm done. That's conditional. And eventually what will happen is I don't need you or you or you. I don't need any of you. I enjoy your company. You're a part of me. I'm a part of you. But I don't need anything. And in that moment, there's unconditional love. And I love this chair as much as I love my daughter. I love you as much as I love the chair and my daughter. Because you're all a part of me. That's unconditional love. And whether or not you're a serial killer or... Mother Teresa, it makes no difference to me. Play the game the way you want. Play it out. I don't care. I love that you're here. I love that you're playing and doing exactly what you want. And guess what? I'm the only person that knows you're doing exactly what you want. You cannot get it wrong. It is impossible. It just appears that way. And like Gordon said, in the now, you decided what to play out in linear time space. So from the perspective of I say, okay, before you came here, all of it was vibrational. It's like you decided on what the painting was going to look like. Here's the painting, and this, you will get to the painting. That is predetermined. The painting is going to be the painting. But then you come down here, and where you're not predestined is, it's a puzzle now. And the painting now is down here in puzzle pieces. And you can... Be in the now, you can be very flowy, you can be kind of this way, you can not buy into any of it. And now the painting's in ten puzzle pieces. And you can go from here to the <coughs> painting and leave. The painting's done, and it was quick, it was easy. Or you can buy into all of it, and now your painting has now become about a billion pieces. And you've got to find them, they're hidden. Now life is no longer fun. You're struggling, you're thinking, you're buying into all of it. You will still get to the painting. You will still get all the puzzle pieces. I guarantee you that even if a million of them are missing, by the time you're on your way through the door dying, you'll pick them up on the way. And you'll end up with that painting. And that's the way I <coughs> put the analogy. But you cannot mess it up. There is no messing up. And I promise you, that you would not be mad at anybody if you could understand them. And telepathy, by the way, is not what people think it is. It is not, we do not have telepathy and I listen to your thoughts, word by word, sentence by sentence. It is boring to listen to people whose <coughs> brains operate like that. We don't do it. When you can do telepathy, we understand conceptually, wholly. And the better you are at it, and the better you are at it, and I'm really good at it, I can not only know what you're thinking, conceptually, emotionally, what it means, but I can understand why you came to that understanding. Because of your history in your whole life. I can track it back, and I can track it back that fast. It's easy. It's easy. You all have done it. You all will do it before, and you'll, you'll know it, and you'll laugh about this. Now, down here, right now. Ooh, good. <laughs> You're giving us a lot to digest. I know. Mm. Cigarette time, you guys digest. Okay. Ah. Okay. Pausing. Stopping. <laughs>